All right, welcome back. We're going to now actually implement some of the, the play uh, routine that is the guess. So and let me go back to main for this uh, as a quick review. Of course, we do the welcome, we initialize the CLI, and then we print this out, guess the word from these words, and we, sh we show the words that we've selected. And uh, we print those out. The, the final thing we're going to do is actually play now based on um, what we've got. And so what I'm going to do is, um, I think in the original requirement I called it guess, that we had a routine called guess. And uh, I think I'm going to rename it, call it play. And in fact, as I look at this, I'm thinking it would probably be nice to even put this code inside of the play module to make it very module. In other words, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking why don't we have a welcome, initialize the CLI, and then after we initialize the CLI, why don't we um, uh, we can go ahead and get the list like we did here. I think I'm going to move both of these up to here. So after we initialize the list, we can get the list size and the word list. And then I'm going to say, why don't we play the game? And we'll pass in the word list. And we'll pass in the list size. All right, now we haven't implemented play yet, and it's telling us. But look how clean that will be. We will simply say welcome, initialize, and and call it like this. In fact, if you want to simplify it even more, I'll show you both ways we could do it. We'll comment this out, and so that this was one way we could do it, All right? But I'm gonna say, wouldn't it be cool if we just did this? If we said play and when we said play oops didn't mean to do that when we say um, I think I'll just retype here I'll say when we call play suppose we called get the list as the first parameter and as the second parameter we called get the list size. Like that. And again, I'm all, I'll use our forward slash and slash star. Just so you'll remember how we did it here for but what's new, look how clean this is. Main, welcome, command line interface in it, and then play the game. So we've abstracted a lot of the details. We'll put inside this play, we'll create a new header file that will handle both the list and the size. And we'll probably begin by copying this code into there, but I'll leave it here for now. So again, I'm giving you, this is how code gets written, right? You modify it, you change it. And in a lot of ways, this is the, the key value of watching these videos. You see literally how code gets written. As opposed to in a textbook, it ten, you tend to think you see the final version and you don't often get to see how it evolves as you're going through here. So speaking of going through here, this will be our third and final version of this. So I'm going to go to our welcome.c and change this version number to 3. That will be the first thing I'll do. We know we're going to have a play function. So I'll come and add a new file, call it play dot h and we'll put our comment here play dot h which we know is the implementation or pardon me the interface I know this is the interface if not define underscore underscore play underscore I'll do it like this this time right two underscores then define copy and paste this so you don't have any typos and then a pound end if. And inside of here, we're just going to have not going to return anything. 
This will be called play. And what we're going to pass into it is a character pointer to a pointer, which will be the list. And then we'll have a, a integer, which will be the list size. That is our function prototype. Right, that is our function prototype. And then we'll play the game. Well, let's go ahead and add a implementation file, the play.c. With our play.c, the play.c, we'll go ahead and include might as well because we know we need it, standard io.h. And of course we're going to implement the the play, how we play this guess what game. And Again, to make sure I don't have any typos, I go to play.h, grab, in this case, line 6, go back to my play.c, paste it, remove the semicolon at the end, and add the open and closing curly braces. Now remember, in our main.c, one of the things we did was say guess the word from this list. So I'm actually going to grab this code that we commented out. I'm now going to copy that into my buffer. All right, so that's in my buffer. And even before I go back to the other one, I see I'm getting this implicit, but we know how to solve that. So while I'm here, include play.h. Takes care of that. And now I'll go to my play.c and literally paste this code that we did have in the other, right, we had it in main, but now I'm going to say guess these words and then do the for loop for i, we have our list size, but instead of it being a word list, looks like, well, I'll call that word list here, word list, that way we can keep it the same. Remove your comment here. And you know what? Right now, although we're not really playing the game, we should at least be able to see period slash main dash dash list red, green, blue. And sure enough, we see guess what word, guess what word from these words. Now, we know we need to keep a track of how many times you're going to guess. So we'll have an integer num tries, and we'll set that to zero. But we haven't tried yet. Now we also need a random number. A random number. And a random, there's different random number generators. The one I'm going to use for this one is called SRAND. So SRAND. And we, we're going to give it a seed, that is an initial value, going to time, passing in null, and that will give it what's called a seed value. So I'll say seed, seed the random number generator. And this is very common. You give it something to initialize, well, initialize it. Well, here we're giving it the time. So this would truly be random because right every time we run this, we've got a different time. Oh, here we are. Implicit. Implicit. Got two implicits. Well, we've used time before. So we could do include time.h. Right, we got that one. And then this s ran Hmm. Well, we could click on Run, and we know from previous that sometimes when we do this, it'll tell us which header file it's in. No luck on that one, though. It's not telling us, right? It's just saying SRAN's invalid. We could Google it, and if I remember correctly, we'll take a chance here. StandardLib.h is where it's at. So you can always bring up Google and search for right SRAN.
tell you where it's at. So that's our random number generator. Well, that, that initializes it. Now what we want to do is, is have a, I'll call it the goal, is we want to go to rand, which will generate a random number, and we want to divide that random number by the list size. What modulo does, it, this, this gives you the remainder. And so basically the remainder will always go from zero up to our list size. In fact, to make this more clear, let's do a printf goal percent %d backslash n put the goal. So this this will be the one that we've picked. And actually as I think about it, we, we need to give a number for each one of these. So I'm going to say percent %d and maybe I'll do percent %d dash and I'll put the value of i. In other words, the way, the way the user is going to input their choice is by typing in the index. So if I go run this, whoa, look at that, floating point exception, core dumped, uh-oh, something's not right there. Mm, that's not good, All right? Signal, floating point exception, all right, so what we'll do on this is say, gosh, where did that happen? Well, let's, let's comment out these two. Click on Run. Well, so far, so good. Well, how about this? Whoa, floating point exception, core dumped. Floating point exception. Well, you know what? And again, all right, I know what's wrong, but I'm trying to show debugging skills. Let's suppose, and probably you see what's wrong as well, but suppose you weren't quite sure. Well, we know it's crashing here. So one of the things we could do is say, how about let's do a printf of list size. Of list size. You know, what, what is list size? Let's find out. So if I run this, whoa, list size is zero. So the message I want to convey to you is that this doing the sometimes it's useful to do printfs to find out what, what the values are. And in this case we know right away, oh, we were dividing by zero. So let's um let's do this. We'll say main dash dash list red, green, blue. And notice our list size is 3. Okay, well now, we notice we didn't crash that time. Let me do an up arrow and do it again. List size is 3. Oh, let, let me uh, rebuild. Uh, Whoa-oh, now, what, what's this? Wait, oh well, again, right? So we need to handle this, but right now we'll, we'll ignore that. We'll say all we're interested in right now is doing it with dash dash list, red, green, blue. Notice we've got red, green, blue, and this time the goal was one. Let's do it again. This time the goal was zero. Let's do it again. This time goal was zero again, one more time. This time the goal was two. So indeed, we've got a random number generator that is doing that. So that'll be our goal. And so now it becomes pretty simple. We could say do, do what? Well, do while the, um, the goal does not equal our choice. And our choice, we'll say integer choice, we're going to have a choice. And what we'll do is say printf your choice. 
and we will say scan f percent d giving it a pointer to our choice and of course every time we do this every time we come in this do loop we want to say the num tries plus plus we want to increment the number of tries so we'll come through as long while the goal does not equal the choice right while we don't have it right once we get out of here we'll say um, well let's see I guess we'll give you just for the sake of example we'll give you a uh, three tries so if goal does not equal choice and um, num tries is less than three and notice this is a condition and this as long as both of these are true we'll continue to do this right as long as both of those are true but when we come out of this if the num tries exact equals a three well you ran out of tries right you ran out of tries so we'll say um, and actually we'll make it even simpler than that when we come out of here if the goal does not equal the choice right if we if if we came out of here and the goal does not equal the choice then print f sorry you lost else print f you win cool now there's a lot of ways we can improve this, right? For example, when I click on run, we crash. <laughs> but what we're interested in right now is from the command line, if I come over here and type clear, looks like my command lines quit responding. I've seen this happen sometimes. If it happens, there we go. Just be patient. It's like there's a delay sometimes. So main dash dash list red green blue your choice now we happen to know that the goal is zero but let's pretend we don't and I enter a one your choice well let's enter a two your choice well I know it's zero so let me enter zero this time you win cool let me run it again okay we know the goal is zero but I'll enter a one I'll enter a two I'll enter a two again. Sorry, you lose. All right, we've got it. Now, this program, there's a lot of ways it could be improved. But for this lesson, this is your goal, to get it where it runs like it shows here. Now, you're welcome to add additional functionality, but this is our goal, just to get here. This is like would be an early version. You could show a demo now to at least, you've got it kind of working. There's certainly more to do, right? We have that crash condition. We don't handle reading into the file totally like we should. But at least we got enough to play a game using at least this option here. All right, as always, get your code to where mine's at here. And uh, you should feel real proud of it. Just look at all these files. I mean, we, this is quite the, uh, quite the project here. All right, I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.